Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. Hope you're enjoying my Luminar 4 videos. This is another in um, the Luminar 4 series, I guess, and this is going to be another mini-series. I just did a mini-series, so I did a, a getting started series, for lack of a better word, a tutorial series. It was 10 videos, gave you a high-level overview of things, and then I just completed a four-video set about the canvas tools, so like crop and lens and geometry and all that. Uh, now I'm going to do a four video series about masking. So there's four kinds of masking. There's brush masking, there's radial masking, there's gradient masking, and there's luminosity masking. I'm going to do a video about each of those. This is brush masking. Um, I did a similar video about six months ago, but I wanted to redo everything for Luminar 4, and I've got a lot of uh, new viewers. Thank you for tuning in and showing up. I appreciate that. Um, and I kind of don't think you guys are going to be looking for Luminar 3 videos, so I'm going to make Luminar 4 specific stuff. So let's go. Um, I have a black piece of paper here, and um, I basically started with a, uh, a base layer, and I had to increase um, or decrease exposure and all that to make it darker. And then I went and added an adjustment layer, and I'm in the light filter. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to make changes here that I want to mask. And on the base layer, you cannot mask the light filter. So that's why that's... Um, I'm on adjustment layer one. So it's just a black sheet of paper, right? So I'm gonna click advanced settings. I'm gonna grab uh, the tone curve and I'm gonna do that. And this is not gonna be about the tone curve. Um, I may do a tutorial about that, super powerful, uh, but I'm gonna skip it for now. All I did is I turned the black sheet white. Okay, let's leave it at that. So uh, to mask, mask is basically just painting in or brushing in. Um, I use the words paint and mask and brush kind of interchangeably. Um, as do a lot of people, but uh, if you want to get to your brush mask, you just click on edit mask on any one of these filters. By the way, you can also do it at the layer level, which means everything on that layer will get brushed or masked or painted in. In this case, I'm just going to do a filter mask. So I'm going to click on brush and you get this menu over here. You've got a little drop down over here with a few things. I'll talk about those. You've got this icon, which is uh, showing you your mask. If I click on that, you don't see anything. I haven't done any masking yet. You have an option here for paint or erase. You'll notice uh, this is my uh, my mouse that I'm moving around here. You'll notice there's a plus sign in it. There's a plus sign in the paint um, little box here, right? So that means I'm painting. Um, if I click on erase, you'll see that little plus sign is now a minus sign, which means I'm erasing or taking away. Um, I'm going to leave it on paint for now. By the way, you can also hit X, and X will switch you back and forth between the two at least on a Mac. I'm on a Mac, that's um, probably obvious, but just wanted to point that out. This is uh, brush settings, which are also over here on the right, and then you've got uh, pen settings for radius and opacity, um, if you're using like a Wacom tablet or something. Okay, size is kind of obvious, right? You can slide that up or down. I tend to use the right bracket key to increase and left to decrease, again, on a Mac. Softness is zero. I'll explain softness in a second. I'm actually going to put it at 100. Uh, and opacity is 100. So let's start masking. Here's what I did. I had a black sheet of paper. I turned it white. But I only want it to be white in certain places. Now just pretend we have a photo here and you want to paint or mask uh, some edit into certain places in the photo. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You get your mask. You're in paint. Um, when you apply the changes on a filter, it applies it globally, and then you grab the masking brush to paint it in specifically or locally. So that's what we're going to do, and all I'm going to do is just drag a line across here. And that's a mask, right? That's basically what I did. I took a black sheet of paper, and I painted a white strip on it. So you could say, I took a sky, and I painted an increase in saturation on it, or... I had an old building and I painted an increase in structure on it. It just depends on the photo, right? You can do that with all of these filters. Just get a filter mask and brush away. That's a, uh, a mask. Now, a couple things I want to point out. This is softness at 100. Softness basically means this edge around the outside that you see here where it goes from, from white to black. It's a little bit of a gradient. It's kind of soft and fuzzy as you can tell. So it's really white in the center, starts to get a little bit gray, a little bit darker gray, a little bit darker, and then it becomes black. That is a soft edge. That's as soft as it gets. That's 100%. Now, if I take softness to zero and do the same thing, you will see a very different look, right? There we go. That is a hard edge, softness of zero. So it basically goes from completely white to completely black like that. There's no gradient zone like there is up here. So that's what softness does. 
I personally leave softness at 100, and that's because when I'm masking stuff into a photo, I kind of want this soft gradient edge because, edge because I think it helps blend whatever I'm masking into whatever it's up against, right? And so I want those edges to be kind of soft. I don't want it to fall off a cliff, basically, like it does here. Here's where race comes in. You can click to erase. Again, you could also hit the X key, at least on a Mac. And you might say, oh, I went too far. I didn't mean to get all that. Okay, we'll just come over here and start erasing. Now notice my eraser has a really hard edge because I'm back at softness zero. So you could take this back up and then you could come in and start erasing and it's a little bit softer as you can see. Um, here's the thing to know. If you really just don't like something, you can come in here and just say clear and it's all gone. That's what clear is for. Um, I'm going to pop over here real quick. Fill just means you fill the whole page. And then invert, of course, is you just invert back. Um, you just flip it from one to the other. So you can invert back and just kind of do this back and forth if you need to swap the mask for some reason. Okay, let me paint another line here. And I want to show you the show mask button. So you can either click in the drop down and click show mask or this little eyeball. And it basically just shows you the mask. Once again, you can tell with the gradient zone because my softness is at 100 that you get the full effect there in the center with a little bit of a gradient until you get no effect. If I take this softness to a zero and I do this, you will see that I've still got show mask on, the little eye icon, so it's showing in red. That's showing you where you have masked. So if you've ever done something like this in a photo and you've painted or masked in some edit adjustments and you're like, ooh, did I go over the line? Well. Click on that and you can find out real quick. Speaking of lines, there's a little a handy trick to allow you to make a very straight line. So let's say you're trying to mask along a straight edge, uh, a roof or something like that, and you're trying to paint in whatever it is. Here's a, here's a little trick. You can click, again, this is Mac. I don't know if it's the same on Windows. You can make one click with your mouse, right? Hands-free now. You can now just move your mouse somewhere else and you can hold down the Shift key and then make a click with the mouse in the new spot and I just drew a straight line. I can now move over here and hold shift key again, one more click, and then I can head back over here where I started, one more time, shift key and a click, and I just made perfectly straight lines. Then you can come and fill in the center if you want to, uh, but I just made like a, a piece of a club sandwich. I must be hungry. Um, but that's a way or a trick to allow you to make straight lines because that's one of the challenges. Um, especially in Luminar, there's not an edge wear brush. And so um, it can be hard sometimes, especially someone like me, I'm a little twitchy and um, I'm not very accurate to be honest. Another reason I like this softness thing is because it allows me to kind of get away with some mistakes because I don't have that hard edge. But regardless, straight lines, hold down the shift key, um, you know, or make a mouse click and then move your mouse somewhere else, then hold down the shift key and click your mouse again and it makes a straight line. Super easy, super fun. Let me clear this. Okay, I'm gonna paint in one more time and just do this. I'll leave it softness at 100. Let me explain density. Density is basically the transparency of the area outside the mask. So as I change the density, you can see it just allows the mask to kind of fade into the background a little bit. If I go all the way density to, to you know zero, you can't see it at all. So a really low density mask um, is basically like blending that mask into the background really well. That's kind of how I think of it. I don't really use that a whole lot, but it's something that can come in handy. And then feathering is, uh, is a nice little thing that just allows you to blur the edges of the mask. As I'm dragging this, you can see um, it's just softening up and blurring the edges of the mask. Once again, it's another tool to help you kind of blend your mask into the background. And of course, don't forget you always have copies. So if you really like the mask that you've used on one filter or one layer, you can copy it and then go and paint it on a different filter or a different layer, and it'll just use that same mask again. So especially if you've done something that's really tedious and taking you a long time to get it just right, you don't have to redo it every time. Just copy it and paste it. Okay, so now just I'll show you how it works in practice. So I've got a picture of a rock that's sitting on a rock, right? So something I saw in New Mexico. I'm just gonna take the AI structure and the boost fairly high. If I can get a hold of that boost, there we go. And because that's a global adjustment, it's impacting the whole picture, but I don't want it to impact the whole picture. I just want that crispy crunchiness that I added to be added just to that rock. 
as well as kind of the rock that the rock is sitting on. So I'm gonna click brush mask and that shows up and I'm gonna say paint, right? It's already on paint. And I'm just gonna come over here and use my mouse to just paint that AI structure onto this rock and some of this other rock that's kind of acting as a pedestal. And then I'm gonna say show mask because I wanna take a look at it. And you know, no surprise, I missed some spots. I'm gonna come in and just add a little extra touch there. Uh, that's enough for now. And I'm gonna say done and done. So I think that looks good. I like that, but I wanna do a few more things. I'm gonna go to landscape enhancer and I'm gonna take dehaze and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna pick golden hour and I'm gonna do that, but I really just want those on the background. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna say edit mask, go back into this brush mask that I used to apply the structure and I'm gonna say copy which I should have done a moment ago, but I forgot. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say edit mask. I'm gonna say brush. And then I'm gonna come over here and say paste. Now it just pasted it to the same areas. I want it the opposite. So that's when I'm gonna click invert. And so I've just applied it to the background. If I show you mask, you can see it's, I missed a little bit there, but I've, I've just copied the mask and pasted it and then inverted it so that everything I did with Landscape Enhancer is now applied to the opposite of what I did the first time around, which is to say it's in the background. So I've got that going. Um, and then let's say I may come over here to color and let's say I wanna boost the saturation of the vibrance, maybe a little bit, maybe I wanna do that globally. Um, and then let's say, what else do I wanna do? Well, that's probably enough. I think you've got the point. Um, the point really is brush masking is your friend. It's very powerful. It gives you control over specific locations or pieces or you know slices, components, whatever you want to call it, uh, specific parts of your photo. So in this case, I took, you know, I kind of made a little bit of a color pop across the whole thing, but I added structure to the foreground, which is really the the primary rock and the pedestal rock, and then I added uh, dehaze and golden hour to the background. And so, you know, I, I took that rock from there to there, a couple of minutes of work just applying brush mask, but that, that pretty much covers it. That's brush masking. It's very powerful, very simple and straightforward, but I recommend using it, playing around with it, just checking it out and uh, getting familiar with it because if you're not yet using masking in Illuminar, it, it's a great tool to have. It gives you much better control over your photo where you can come in and pick individual colors or different you know, whatever it is, different edits and apply them selectively. So it, for me, it comes down to control and that's why I like it because, you know, you might have in your mind what you want to do with a photo um, and it's often very hard to get there without doing some kind of brush work with a brush mask. And that's the power of brush masking and that's a tutorial, a deep dive, if you will, on how to use brush masking. I'll be back soon with the next one, which will be radial masking. And then I'll do uh, gradient masking. And then last I will do number four will be luminosity masking, which is super cool. So that's it, my friends. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And don't hesitate to leave me a comment, feedback, and um, suggestions for future videos as well. But this is another mini series, a four-part deep dive on masking. This is part one. See you soon with part two. Thanks for watching, friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.